going to love it, and we're going to be baby faces because we brought their precious Japanese stars to them. What happened? Once they, once they found it, first they found out they didn't have to pay for the fucking Japanese wrestlers' paperwork when they worked in Canada for an American company running in Canada, and they're Japanese. They got around that, and then the people went so fucking crazy over it that New Japan wanted to start sending the guys, and they wanted to have them. And it only took about two years after I originally instigated the idea to begin with because I knew that's what the people wanted to see, but they wouldn't pay for it. So at any rate. But we have passed all that now. I'm making more money, and I'm happier here at the castle doing my part-time thing, and Ring of Honor just sold out Madison Square Garden. And overall, yes, I'm happy for them. There was a few – you know what they said? When you you get all the way through the briar patch, you're happy that you made it, but you still met a few pricks along the way. And I'm happy for them, and I'm glad they made it. And I wish a few of the other guys that uh, that were with them when I was there were still with them so they could be in Madison Square Garden, too. Now let's see what happens when they actually have a show. No, well, it's good. But here's the thing. This for – well, I won't say for this audience, but if they ran a show <clears throat> just in Madison Square Garden in New York City and, and had that many people on just a regular night without WrestleMania being in, in, uh, in town or whatever, it would be – the same thing in reverse as when me and Weasel Dooley first saw the first, our first Madison Square Garden show on cable. We were so disappointed that it was the, not even as good as the matches were every Tuesday night at the Louisville Gardens because we didn't know the difference in the styles, the promotions. This is before tape and all that type of thing. It would be that in reverse. Just the average fan who just goes to see WWF wrestling in New York for the past 20 years and hasn't really watched anything else, if they saw the Ring of Honor shit, they'd be, holy fuck, this is the greatest shit I've ever seen. Because that was the response that we were getting at the house shows when Sinclair first took over. And the TV did make some new fans. It took longer, especially in some markets. But the TV made new fans right off the bat, even if there were 50 of them. And and those people who had only seen the big promotions live before and had just seen Ring of Honor on TV and thought, well, I'll go to see this when they're in my town, their teeth were on the floor. We've never seen guys hit each other like this. Holy shit, look at all this shit. And it once again, it wasn't about the goofy shit. It was about the fucking fast pace and the blistering action and the hard hits and the fucking guys that were just – you could tell that this was – even if it was a work, this shit was not easy, right? That's the biggest thing. The people got a respect for the style of the athleticism. Even if they knew it was a work, they were like, well, this, these fucking guys are serious. And, and so, you know, they were, they were over the moon. But the, the, the Ring of Honor fans who had been with it since the start and who watched all the other independents and who's seen all this shit on the Internet and seen the fucking guys breaking their necks and fucking doing all these goofy dives off the roof and all that stuff, they were like, well, they've slowed up a bit. Yes, because once you got on television and you're being seen, the first time the Ring of Honor got on TV with the first show, that first weekend, they were seen by multiples of 30 and 40 times the people that had ever seen them before, even on access, just by being on that many local TV stations. Even with, if you had 5,000 people watching each fucking show, which is not even a one rating in a fucking town the size of Louisville, you would have had goddamn uh, half a million people. Well, no, 350,000 people watching, 70 stations, whatever the fuck. The point is, we couldn't just keep going the same way we had been and flooring it and running all these angles and assuming everybody knew who these wrestlers were and assuming everybody knew what Ring of Honor was and, and assuming that everybody was part of the secret club. We slowed down and started presenting, here is Ring of Honor. Here's what we are. Here's the main stars. Here's why they're mad at each other. Here's a style. It's for the same reason that I didn't uh, take Ron Wright out of the wheelchair for the first year or put Bob Armstrong in the ring for a year and a half. We weren't going to go out and, and shoot the biggest angle of all time in the history of Ring of Honor when we'd been on television for a brand new audience for 12 weeks. And as history has shown... The pickup in live markets took a couple of years, and, and and it took, frankly, for not only some bigger name talent 
that brought some new eyeballs to AJ Styles did uh, or not AJ Styles rather Matt Hardy did did good for us at first with bringing some new fans and then AJ Styles later on some of the talent got free and and that already had a following the TV show sunk in in some of the markets where people found it and kind of got hooked on it some of the stations that weren't really happy about broadcasting wrestling especially now with that two billion dollar deal but they, they some of them started to come around richmond virginia was doing a three rating on saturday nights after the news which was unheard of for them since the last time they'd aired crockett promotions wrestling doing a big number at that time so it took a while and people started getting more interested and then over the last couple of years has been the blow up just because of the 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 whole internet you know new japan omega young bucks of 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 underground you know uh, revolution frenzy has taken it and now with vince getting that tv deal I would not be surprised if Sinclair has will not say now that we've sold out Madison Square Garden we can we can do a 2 hour weekend wrestling program and put it on in in, in at least our primetime adjacency whether it be 6 to 8 or whether it be 11 to 1 depending on your time zone that's that would be eastern or something like that because there's a market for it and then sell sponsorships that are at least regional i think they cover what 42 or 43 percent of the country now maybe without that tribune merger going through but if they cover 35 percent of the country uh chances are most of their stations and we had already looked are in uh areas where you could sell regional sponsorships to a a or even a monthly sports special if they didn't want to go weekly but i think they're willing to take the next step and if they start if that starts getting on television uh especially in in on broadcast tv then it it, it as long as there are P, tv outlets willing to do business with wrestling now a lot more people are going to get chances to lose a lot more money and ho- and hopefully a few of them might make some but it it that's been the difference it, yes there's a you can't tell me that there's that many more people liking wrestling than there was two years ago that suddenly they can sell out these buildings. It's it's event marketing, and it's sticking it to the to the monopoly, and it's the guys – the fans know that the guys they like, whether it's Omega or the Bucks or Cody or anybody else, are benefiting more from this than they would if it was the WWE drawing these houses. All of that's working together. But the real shift in wrestling finances and business comes when somebody else on a national platform says, okay, Vince got this $2 billion, so we're going to fucking try to get some money too. And they, and they start their own franchise or take an existing one and make it bigger. Does that make sense? It makes sense. I mean, I think a lot of fans – I don't think that's the only reason they're going. And I also think – and there's really well, no, it's going to be it's going to be a great show too. But I'm I'm just saying that the the, the event is being is bigger than the, than the the lineup. I also want to say this though: New York is a little unique in that if it was the right event and it was pushed the right way, and if you know if it was New Japan coming in with Ring of Honor to the Garden, even though Ring of Honor's been running the Hammerstein for or uh, running uh, the Manhattan Center for so many years, I still think you would have a chance of drawing a big house there just because of where it is. It wouldn't oh, have yeah. to be the WrestleMania audience. No, I mean, it, it, truthfully and honestly, but, but here's the problem. If you run Madison Square Garden and you only draw 8,000 people, you spend a lot of money. Yeah, because lost 20, a lot of money. 20 years, well, you spent, 20 years ago, it cost uh, over $150,000 to get out of that building, just rent and expenses. So uh, uh, that's the thing, and, and somebody said, well – Ring of Honor is just piggybacking on New Japan's success. <laughs> With all due respect to anybody in New Japan Pro Wrestling, they would not be running – New Japan Wrestling would not be running Madison Square Garden if Vince McMahon didn't want them to. The only way that this is happening is because of Ring of Honor, because of Sinclair Broadcasting and their legal team. And that's a fight that they did not want to pick because – if. It, New Japan's and and somebody said AAA may have a date. I think they probably told Vince that, and Vince said, "Fuck, they, if it's passed next week, they probably won't even run it because of the way they do business in Mexico." I was there when 
when Pena was 24 hours late to his fucking meeting with Vince. <laughs> really? And didn't even acknowledledge it. <laughs> Come that. on. No, just like, in it, I'm just, but so that's Vince. Vince did not understand the world of Lucha and vice versa. And that's a story for another time. But, but anyway, no, it, New Japan has a great United States partner in Ring of Honor. That relationship is perfect, I believe. Because New Japan can get into plenty of buildings as they've been doing in California, or, you know, whatever they want in in some respect, but they wouldn't have gotten Madison Square Garden. And neither would Ring of Honor if Sinclair Broadcasting had said, oh, just fucking do your best and hadn't backed him up on it. But that's why I'm saying if Vince got that fucking money and Ring of Honor sees and they of course, immediately the all in success was trumpeted to the highest levels of Sinclair corporate because they had a big part to play in that also, not only their wrestlers, but their infrastructure and drawing 6,000 people WrestleMania weekend. So yes, they, they wouldn't sell out Madison square. Maybe they would, who knows at this point, you don't want to even say that, but if ring of honor just ran Madison square garden in February, when nobody was in town, they'd probably do 10,000 people. But it, it, it at that point, then, do you risk hurting the uh, – you, you start to make yourself look bad if you only do 10,000 coming back from doing 18 or 15 or whatever it is. But it, 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 it'll it be very interesting. Yeah, very interesting what happens next, too. Um, uh, well, who's going who's gonna to say, uh, okay, we're going to run a stadium? Because that's what's <laughs> next. you got to go outdoors next. There's there, there's few other few other bigger buildings indoors. I mean, they could run Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky. It seats twenty three thousand. Can you come Maybe back? I, Can you come back to the garden? And when? Um, I think you definitely have to almost. Well, first thing I'd do if I just wanted to be a prick is I'd look at the WWE's schedule of pay per views <laughs> that they put out for a year and see if they're in the New York market any other time. But I mean, you know, you could do. As long as you left an appropriate time, I don't think you want to come back within six months or whatever. But it, if there was some promotional hook that you could think of where you had your talent available and here's a timing or here's something that would fit in with one of our big shows or maybe we've got a debut in a new pay-per-view provider or whatever and make something out of it, get a theme, get something to sell, I, they ought to be able to do it again. Anyway, so that's basically, do you have any questions, my my son, on the transition, the story from the beloved ticket broker, Kerry Silken, to mass? Oh, and you know, here's something else. Here's something else I had to tell the fucking guys. And I, that's where I came up with that phrase, because I I had to explain to him as far as fighting in the crowd or diving over the rail or taking bumps over the rail or whatever that the, the audience in Philly loved so much. I had to sit them all down and say, do you, do you see anybody out there that you want to work for for the rest of your life that you want to be in debt to, that you want to hang your fate and your balance of your family and your happiness in your life, you want to put in their hands? Let those motherfuckers sue you. Because especially, I, I told I said, Carrie, I said, you're going to get put out of business and you're going to work for these people for the rest of your life. And, and then especially when Sinclair bought the company, we had to just completely ban it and tell guys they were going to get in trouble if they did it because they still wanted to do it because they'd been doing it and they did it other places. But it, when when it, I said to him, when it was just the beloved Kerry Silken ticket broker and, and wrestling fan who was behind this, he could go out and shake their hand and you could give them a few free T-shirts and they wouldn't sue. But when they find out that Sinclair Broadcast Group, a billion-dollar corporation – with all these resources is is behind the company where you just caught Davy Richards's heel of his boot in your kid's mouth and you got to pay his dental work. And also you need to send him to college. You might as well tack that on. You get sued and they have to sue the guy that did it. And they, because to get to the company, they have to sue the, the talent that was involved in the match. They have to sue the security company. If there was any at the, at the shows, which was a whole nother ball of wax to get to the to the owners, they sue everybody. So it's just shit that they had to have some growing pains to get bigger. And I guess they've grown up seeing the Japanese tapes. When if the Japanese people don't sue anybody, when when Bruiser Brody was out there fucking hands and slapping them with the fucking bull rope, they don't sue people. It was a badge of honor to them for real. 
but it's just a badge of honor to American wrestling fans to get kicked in the mouth or have their little daughter's fucking leg broken by their favorite wrestler on a diet. 